Good afternoon everyone. I hope you're all keeping dry on this wet day. I have a bit of time to kill before I head out so um, I was speaking to someone about sugar and cravings and figured I might as well do a quick video on it. So cravings can be brought on through many many pathways so there's many driving factors behind cravings specifically sugar cravings so that's what i'm talking about now sugar being any sort of carbohydrate it can be fruit bread cake starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes um grains rice whatever sugar whatever type of sugar is your proviso, um, sugar cravings can be brought on through many different ways. But right now, I want to talk about sugar and your gut. So if you watched the video I did last night, um, and you've been monitoring my posts, which I know you are, I spoke about how predominantly 90% of our gut bacteria is controlled by two main species. Um, the Firmicutes and the Bacteroides. So today we're going to look at the Firmicutes. So the Firmicutes, contrary to their name, do not make you firm and cute. They make you fat and sick. So these are the bacteria that are the driving factor behind sugar cravings when everything else is lined up well, when your sleep is lined up and you've been doing well with nutrition um, and everything else, these bacteria will come in and they will be the driving factor. So, you know when you start a health journey and most people immediately will cut out all sugars um, and junk food and so on and the first three to five days they feel miserable and they're cranky and they're craving a lot of sugar um, and they're just, they're like, this is too hard. So the main driving factor behind that is these Firmicute bacteria because they survive, they eat, they duplicate, they thrive on sugars. Um, and that's when you start to eliminate the sugars and you start feeding them less, they send out this signal saying we want more sugar because that is their main fuel source. So when you start starving them out, that's where they start obviously panicking because survival is our most basic instinct. And we have to remember that bacteria that live inside us, they are also, alive so they're an organism in themselves so survival is their most basic instinct as well so when we start a health journey and we decide we're not going to have any more sugars again then they're going to drive our cravings even more so yes you do get that kind of sugar um cold turkey come down um, and some of that is from sugar being removed from your body and blah 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 but a lot of this driving factor comes from these firmicutes in your gut and what we want to do if we're really smart about it we're not going to totally eliminate we don't want firmicutes they make us fat and sick they cause inflammation they just really make us feel bad they kill off our good bacteria so they don't play in our favor at all and they also contribute to gut damage leaky gut and this obviously dysbiosis. So dysbiosis being where you have an overgrowth of bad bacteria in your gut. So we want to be super smart. We want to eliminate these firmicutes as much as we can, but we also want to be able to manage our cravings. So what we do then is, if you've been watching some of my posts, and the reason I'm talking about this is because someone had said, I'm gonna cut out all sugars come September and I'm gonna swap it out for fruit. Specifically, they mentioned watermelon and I'm like, when I hear that alarm bells go off and I'm like, that's not a good idea. So what we want to do is we want to entice these firmicutes to come out into our gut with a little bit of sugar. But we also want to give them some poison too that we can poison or kill them off. So if we kill them off enough with what are called modbiotics, if you've seen my post, you'll have seen me mention some modbiotics are these natural poisons found in nature that modify or regulate your gut bacteria. So if we can put them into our 
digestive tract, then we can entice the firmicutes out with the sugar and poison them at the same time. So while we're starting our weight loss journey and eliminating a lot of the big sugar players, so don't get me wrong, we are eliminating the big sugar players, but we're still having just enough sugar that we're gonna entice those firmicutes to feed on these sugars, which also contain poison, which will kill them off. So we bring down this ratio of firmicutes, okay? Because we're poisoning them off. That means they're dead, they're gone. If you don't do this, they just kind of go into hibernation. So they'll drive up your cravings for a while and then they hibernate. So we'll go, for example, with a ketogenic diet. You obviously eliminate all sugars straight off the bat. But a lot of the times, most people that do a ketogenic diet, they're not killing off this bacteria too. So the bacteria, after they get past the first few days of cravings, blah, 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 the bacteria don't vanish, they don't die off, they go into hibernation. So then when someone say, goes to a party or they give up on their ketogenic diet or Christmas happens or whatever, they have some sugar that wakes up these firmicutes. Then it drives the cravings even higher. And you hear about people all the time that as soon as I went back on carbs, I totally blew up and I couldn't control myself. That is these firmicutes and how they work. So these bad bacteria in your gut. So what we're doing is, if we're strategic enough, we're going to bring in these mod biotics instead. Some of my favorites being blueberries and raspberries. Janine, you heard me talk about this earlier. So the concept is that if you get fresh, organic blueberries, raspberries, and they're ripe, they're bitter. They're a bit bitter, but they also are sweet at the same time. So if you look at the outside of a blueberry, you have the skin and sometimes it's kind of cloudy if you look at the skin and people get worried by that because they think it's fungus or mold. It's not actually, it's the polyphenols. That's that poison. So the polyphenols is the poison that's contained on the skin of the berries and it wrapped around inside this poison, what have you, you have the sugar. So the sugar is what entices those bacteria to feed on also the poison. So the polyphenols kill off the firmicutes. <clears throat> side. So then when you do decide that you are going again, you don't have this big flood of cravings. Your body metabolizes them a lot better. You don't blow up because the firmicutes aren't blown up anymore because you've already killed them off. I really love raspberries because raspberries are so bitter and they are super mod biotics. Like they're awesome. They go into your gut. They'll kill off those um, bad bacteria. And my heated guide girls, you know what I'm talking about with cert foods. A lot of these, so you're getting the polyphenols, you're killing off the bad bacteria you're also getting the sirtuin proteins out of these polyphenols that are activating your skinny genes and your anti-cancer genes and all that so you're getting the genetic expression but you're also controlling these bad bacteria so when you do bring back in carbs you don't blow up like a balloon does that make sense? You can also look, so all vinegars are awesome. They're very high in polyphenols. Of course, we like apple cider vinegar. Balsamic vinegar is awesome. Coffee, um, organic green tea, specifically matcha tea. Uh, your raw organic dark chocolate. Are you really dark chocolate? High in polyphenols. Olives are great. They're really high. I like rosemary. Rosemary is a great mod biotic. I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head um, what I like but these red wine can't forget red wine obviously organic and the reason I push organic and if a few of you might remember someone having a go in here a few weeks ago about how I push organic I only push what benefits people I don't push it just for the sake of pushing it so when I say organic it's because there's a reason behind it Organic berries. When we spray our berries with pesticides or herbicides, what do we do? We kill the polyphenols. We kill that beneficial stuff that's on the berries. So then we're eating berries 
and we're getting nothing but sugars and chemicals. What is the point of that? And the same with wine. If you're going to have wine, you want to at least have organic wines. And it's easy enough to find at least organic wine now. Um, there's always at least two or three bottles in a wine shop. The same idea, if that wine is not organic, you're not going to get the nutrition, you're not going to get the polyphenols, you're not going to get the resveratrol, which is another kind of stronger polyphenol that we really like. You don't get all that if it's not organic. So you want to get organic as much as you can so that you can get these polyphenols in to poison the bad bacteria so that you can continue to stack things in your favor. Does that make sense? Okay, I think that that's all I wanted to say right now because I don't want these videos going too long. I could go on forever. But that's how that works in regards to cravings and bad bacteria. So if you're starting a health journey come September, because nobody's starting one right now, and you're going, you're all on for eliminating those sugars, have the smart sugars and back to the watermelon. So watermelon, one, watermelon is a very gmo Believe it or not, it's very GMO'd fruit now, especially those seedless watermelons. Don't get the seedless. Eat the seeds. The seeds are very, very high in polyphenols and they're awesome mod biotics. So seeds and fruits are awesome. Um, but watermelon, although it has a high water content, it has a high sugar content, but a very low kind of nutrient and polyphenol. So although it tastes nice and it's a nice treat, you're not getting much benefit, not like you would get from raspberries, gooseberries, huckleberries, Saskatoon berries, blackberries, strawberries to an extent and so on you get what I'm saying so you don't get the benefits even cranberries so cranberries although they're very high in sugar if you get actual cranberries not the bloody juice get the cranberries not the powder real cranberries they're amazing cranberries are very acidic so if you have a bladder infection or a uti infection or kidney issues or anything like that you've heard people say drink cranberry juice it's not for the fact that it's an amazing juice or anything like that or the vitamin c that's not it it's the polyphenols and the acid you ingest the acid you kill that bug that's causing your infection you kill off that bacteria and then the acid is what helps make you stronger and those polyphenols in the skin see we're always learning something um but again organic what about dried cranberries mm, no there you go no anytime i use cranberries let's say if i'm cooking or something it'll always be organic frozen cranberries and if i'm making like cranberry sauce at Christmas or I sometimes I like to put cranberries and scones on refeed day Terry you'll know what I'm talking about but it'll always be frozen organic but if you can find fresh organic straw cranberries they're going to be even better dry when we dry out fruit we kill off all the nutrition we kill off all the polyphenols and we increase the sugar content tenfold so that glycemic index just goes through the roof in it's a refi day thing Tara it's like you it just it the benefits just aren't there if that answers your questions okay that that's it thanks for watching I'm sure I'll have more I really want to do a lot more videos so keep an eye out for me you got questions and I'll address them okay ciao ladies